Welcome to Highline BI class video number 46. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI 348 Chapter 4, this is the Excel workbook, or you can download the PowerPoints, click on the link below the video. Hey, last video we took this data set. We had 190 records. There's some rows hidden right there. We had X equals weekly ad spent expense, and then Y, that's our weekly sales. We plotted it to see if there was a relationship between weekly ad expense and weekly sales. The markers show us that as X is increasing, Y tends to be increasing. From our visual interpretation that there's a positive or direct relationship, we then learn how to calculate covariance and coefficient of correlation. Now, given that we see there's a direct relationship visually and in our numerical measure, we want to create an equation that can help us predict. We want to be able to say something like $43,000 for weekly ad expense. What should the weekly sales be? Now we're going to jump over to our PowerPoints. I'm going to hit Shift F5 to start on this slide. This is slide 18. Now in algebra, you may have seen y equals mx plus b. Y, that's the value we're trying to predict. X, that's the value we throw into this equation, the independent variable that will predict the dependent or predicted variable. The M is the slope. The B is the y-intercept. Well, that's algebra. Here in statistics, we have two different equations, one for our population parameters and one for our sample statistics. Yes, we usually aren't going to know the actual population y-intercept or the population slope. So we're going to have to use methods to calculate the sample statistics for slope and for intercept. This will be called y hat. And I will write it like this or actually use the symbol y hat equals slope times x plus y-intercept. Now slope, whichever variable you use, the meaning of the slope is going to be for every one unit of x, how much does y change? In a positive relationship, y will go up. In a negative relationship, y will go down. And the intercept, whichever variable you use, it simply is going to tell us at what point does the line cross the y-axis. Or what is y when x equals to 0? And of course, this equation, any one of these equations, describes a straight line. Now let's go to our next slide, because guess what? We're not always going to have our population parameter. So the simple linear regression model, y equals slope times x plus intercept plus an error value. Now these are called beta sub 1, beta sub 0, and this is epsilon. Now this error is going to come from the fact that we're creating an equation or a straight line. And I'm going to go to the next slide. And guess what? All of the original sample data points are not on the straight line. This straight line comes from this equation. We're going to create this equation for making prediction. There's the slope. There's the x. There's the y-intercept. That equation describes that line. And because all of the sample point markers <laughs> above and below are not exactly on the line, we have some error. Now, if we're going to use this model, we have to make some assumptions about this error. So again, there's some sample points that are above and below. And I want you to think about this for a second. Here's, here's a marker above. That's the actual value from our sample. But look at where the prediction is going to be. The prediction is going to be way down here. So in this particular instance, the actual predicted value is less than the particular value from the sample. The model or the equation under predicts. Down here, it's the opposite. The model over predicts. So because we don't want our equation to over predict or under predict too much. We want to look at the assumptions necessary for such a model, a model that will not over or under predict too much. Now, notice this has x and y. When I go to the next slide, we're going to look at these assumptions necessary. I'm going to tip this on its side. So next slide. Now, notice I've tilted this, but the 
x, that's weekly ad expense, and y, predicted weekly sales, they're still there. I've just tilted it on the side. And these bell-shaped distributions are our assumptions about how the error should be distributed. Now, here's the line. There's the equation. And notice, no error term. Because right on the line, the expected value of epsilon should be 0. That's our first assumption. And all that means is, if this is a probability distribution for the possible error values above or below, as we go higher and higher above the line or below the line, the probability gets smaller and smaller that we could get one of those errors. And right in the middle, that's where the frequency is highest, the probability is highest. We're hoping to get errors right at 0 or close. So in order for this line to not over and under predict too much, we really need most of the errors to be right near the middle. So Number one, the expected value of epsilon or error is going to be a 0. If that's true, we can treat the slope and the y-intercept as a constant and not include our error term. Assumption number two, we have a bell-shaped distribution. Hopefully, most of the errors are right near the middle. Now, the third assumption is that that error, the variation or the standard deviation, will be constant across all of the x's on our line. Now, we'll actually be able to test this later using what's called a residual plot. We also want to notice that expected value of y given x, that's actually for population values. So if you imagine that scatter plot we just saw, if there was some values for the y up above and below the line, if we took the mean of all those, then the expected value of y for the population given a particular x would be exactly on the line. Now if that's true for this equation, if we go to our next slide, then we can see we don't have to show the distribution of errors. because expected value of epsilon, the error is going to be 0. So there is what is called the simple linear regression equation without the error value. Now we'll go back to slide number 19. When we use the word model, that's the parameters and the error. If we go to slide number 22, simple linear regression equation, population parameters without the error value. Now, of course, most of the time, we are not going to have our population parameters slope and y-intercept. So we're going to have to figure out formulas to calculate both of those to create our sample statistics for slope and y-intercept. If we go to slide number 24, we can see estimated simple linear regression equation this is going to be with our population parameters for slope and y-intercept. So this will be called y hat. I'm going to sometimes do it as y sub hat or use the actual symbol. Sample statistic slope times x plus sample statistic y-intercept. Now this value will predict two different things. If we want to estimate the population parameter, then y hat will be the point estimator of expected population value of y given a particular x. That'll be the mean of all the y values for a particular x in the population. But most of the time, we're going to be using y hat to make predictions. y hat can predict an individual y value for a particular business situation. So we're going to use y hat for our weekly ad expenses and weekly sales. We'll simply throw in an x, say 43,000 for our weekly ad expense. And the y hat will tell us what our predicted weekly sales will be. Now we need our formula for calculating slope and y-intercept. Let's go to slide 27. For slope b sub 1, we have numerator and denominator. Look at this. This is the same deviation of x times deviation of y we did for covariance and correlation. And then in denominator, we're going to take the sum of the x deviation squared. Once we get our b, we simply plug it into this equation y bar minus slope times x bar. We will then have our sample statistic for y-intercept and for our slope. Here are the variables. Here are some alternatives you may see. We're going to use this formula, but you may see this as a formula for slope or this one. 
All right, now we want to put this formula right here into action and calculate slope. We're going to go over to Excel. Now we're on the sheet slope and intercept. Now here's our same data set, weekly ad expense and weekly sales. In our last video, we already calculated the x deviation, particular x minus the x bar, the y deviation, the particular y minus the y bar. And then we multiply those two and add them. That is our numerator for the slope. Now, what do we need? We need to take x minus x bar and square it. Well, we already have the deviation x minus x bar. So right here, I'm simply going to come over and say equals, hey, that deviation for x, caret 2 to square it, control enter. Now we can copy this down. Come to the bottom, Alt equals. And when I hit Enter, there's the total. That's going to be our denominator. So we can come over to slope equals the sum of the product of the two deviations. That's the numerator divided by, and the denominator is going to be the sum of the deviations for x squared. And when I hit Enter, that is our slope. Now our y-intercept, we can simply say, hey, where is our y bar? There it is minus the slope times the x bar. And that will give us our y-intercept. Now, we don't have to go through all these steps. Once we've done it once or twice, we can simply use, and there's a great function, equals slope. It wants the known y's, so I highlight all the y's, comma the known x's, I highlight all the x's. And when I hit Enter, gives me the exact same number. Y-intercept, they named this one smartly, just like they did slope. Intercept, known y's, comma, known x's. And there is the y-intercept. That means we have our estimated regression equation. Y hat equals 8.24 times x plus 36,857 and four pennies. That slopes, and we can see over here that slopes right there, $8.24, means our estimated equation predicts for every $1 increase in ad expense, weekly sales will go up by $8.24. Now, the y-intercept, sure, it's where if we were to throw x of 0 into this, the line would cross right there, but we're never going to do that because our sample data has a min and a max, and that value is way outside what's called the experimental region. Since we have our sample data here, that's the only evidence we have, we have no idea what this relationship might do outside this range in either direction. So we want to keep our predictions only between the min and the max of our x values. Now, I want to come back over here. I definitely want to calculate the min and the max for our experimental region. And this is the x value, because the x is what we're throwing in into our equation. So 14,591 equals and the max of our x values. So our experimental region goes from about 14,000 to about 65,000. We definitely should limit our estimates and predictions to the experimental range. Any extrapolation outside the range yields unreliable estimates. Now here it is. Here's our 43,000 bucks. We have our slope and y-intercept. We're going to build our equation. Equals, and I'm going to take the slope. There's our slope we calculated. Times the x we're going to throw into our equation plus our y-intercept. And when I hit Enter, Hey, wait a second. The 43,000, was it within our experimental region? You got it. So we have a reasonable estimate. If we spend $43,000 as ad expense, our estimated weekly sales will be $391,243. Now, of course, the beauty of this is we can put whatever we want, 60,000 here for weekly ad expense. And our equation predicts that weekly sales will be $531,349. If I go ahead and throw in a $150,000, that is an unreliable estimate. Our experimental range, 
We don't know. You know, way out here, maybe things start to exponentially increase because we're doing so much with ads. But over our range, we can go ahead and slap whatever we want in here, 63,000. There is our estimate. Now, we do want to make sure that we correctly interpret the slope and the y-intercept. As we said for the slope, for every $1 increase in ad expense, the equation predicts that weekly sales will increase by $8.24. And that's, of course, over our experimental range. As for the y-intercept, when x equals 0, the equation predicts that we'll have weekly sales of 36000 857, but that's an unreliable estimate because zero is not in our experimental range. Extrapolating what the sales would be at x equals zero, of course, yields an unreliable estimate. All right, now we want to go look at a second example. We're going to go over to experimental range two. Hey, here's our same data set we have intro level BMX racing bikes, the bicycle weight, the price. We already calculated correlation and plotted it. So now we can simply calculate our slope equals slope. And I'm going to put in the known y's, comma, the known x's. And when I hit Enter, whoops, when I hit Enter, I get a slope that is negative because this is a negative or inverse relationship. As bike weight increases, the price decreases. That slope says for every one pound of bike increase, the price is predicted to go down by 58 bucks. Now the y-intercept, intercept, known y's, comma, known x's. And the y-intercept is 1,732. So that, of course, means at bike weight equal to 0, that's how much the bike will cost. That is not in our experimental range. That is an extrapolation. We cannot have a bike that has zero pounds, so that is meaningless. However, over the range of our min and max, it certainly helps our equation make the prediction. All right, so now let's estimate what a 25-pound bike would be. Equals, and we have our slope of minus 58 bucks times number of pounds plus our y-intercept. And there it is. If we have a bike that's 25 pounds, our estimated regression equation predicts that the bike should cost 267 bucks. All right, so in this video, we saw how to create an estimated regression equation. We saw the formulas for slope and y-intercept. And we also made sure that we talked about experimental range, the min and the max, for making predictions with our equation. All right, next video, we'll actually learn how to calculate a measure called r squared that will tell us the goodness of fit of the estimated equation line to the actual sample data points. All right, we'll see you next video.